Well, as you can probably see from the state of my face, I'm uh, just come off from doing the first session. <laughs> and um, I have to say, it's a most extraordinary thing to have to drive this enormous, great warship of an orchestra with, what, nearly 450 people. Uh, it's physically immensely tiring, um, but it's also incredibly energizing because the, the sheer volume of sound and the energy of the singers and the brass players when combined is really awe-inspiring, even for hardened professional musicians in an orchestra. Um, so it's both a great pleasure, but also an enormous responsibility to try and marshal these forces. And of course, the other problem is you have to remember, uh, with an orchestra this big, um, what actually comes to your ears at the front is not the sound in the building. So you have to make intelligent guesses as to when things are not quite sounding together, whether it's just because of where you are or because of problems of coordination. But we've had an extremely wonderful time, I think partly because after our rehearsal period and the two concerts, I think the whole ensemble now is getting more used to the building. It's fantastic to work in this great Polish Gothic cathedral of uh, St Mary Magdalene in, in Wroclaw, um, big brick building, uh, huge nave, um, not a circular church as barely as probably would have expected in Les Invalides, but still nevertheless uh, a really awe-inspiring building for this piece of huge acoustic which is what you need. It's not really an orchestra, it's one enormous orchestra, plus four small orchestras, four brass orchestras. Um, there's a total of, I think, 70 or 80 or 90 brass players in the whole ensemble. And the four brass orchestras play uh, from selected, in selected moments from different parts of the main body of instrumentalists. So you get this extraordinary quadraphonic sound as the last judgment is called and the trumpets call from all corners of the stage. And then, of course, we have this quite magnificent choir of 200 people, um, half British, half Gabrieli Consort, and half Polish, the Wroclaw Philharmonic Choir. We've been working together now for two or three years, and with great success and great joy, sharing our combined expertise, um, exploring sometimes the differences in our vocal culture, which are often quite large, but nevertheless, uh, it's a wonderful uh, experience to work with the young singers, mainly young singers from the Rotsav Choir and our own singers and to exchange ideas and to work collectively on a piece such as, as the Berlioz. Um, we also in the orchestra, which is a particularly great joy for me, have about 80 young musicians, teenagers, um, about 20 from Cheatham School of Music in the UK, our leading state educational establishment for talented young musicians. Gabrielis have worked with them for several years and this is the first time we've worked with the brass team. All the brass players, I should say, are playing historical instruments from the 19th century. And <clears throat> this includes natural trumpets, natural horns, ophiclides, small narrow bore trombones, including, incidentally, one that was owned by Sir Edward Elgar, which is a little bit later than the period, but very close to Berlioz, um, which is a particular thrill to have a, an instrument which is owned by a, favorite, com a famous composer. But also, you'll hear the amazing colours and that these young people are playing these instruments is, for the first time many of them, is, is a huge educational process for them. But the brass playing, I have to say, in the school is so fantastic. Um, they're really as good as any professionals you could hire. We also have uh, 50 or 60 young Polish string players who have come from all over Poland and have been auditioned by the principal members of the Wroclaw Philharmonic Orchestra, which I should say is the core of this orchestra we call the Wroclaw Festival Orchestra. Um, and this again has been an extraordinary pleasure for me to see such incredibly well-disciplined and also such brilliantly well-taught string players. The technique they have is absolutely wonderful and I hope that they will have got an enormous uh, uh, benefit from the experience of working alongside professional musicians and to do the sort of punishing schedule that we've actually had to do to, to get this incredible piece on disc for everybody. I've long been interested in this Berlioz piece. I suppose as somebody who calls his ensemble the Gabrielli players, I was always interested in the idea of space or what we call polychorality in music. And that, of course, exists in the 17th century in Venice with the great galleries of St. Mark's, but was perhaps most enthusiastically taken up by Hector Berlioz in the 19th century. And he writes in his great treatise on instrumentation that the building 
is as much a musical instrument and one should use the space creatively. And we've very much taken that uh, to heart, not only obeying his instructions, but also using in the recording process um, the technology. I think Berlioz himself would love to have had the idea of the solo tenor singing from a distant gallery, for example, um, to get that angelic, um, seraphic sound, um, which is so much part of the music. Uh, and we've very much used the building in that way. This piece is an extraordinary work. Of course, it's known for its vastness, but Berlioz, like the true theatre composer he was, knows that you know if you have a great trick, don't use it too often. We've just spent three hours doing the loudest part of this piece, but in fact, these massed forces play for no more than, I should think, barely 15 minutes of an hour and a half work. Um, and they are very much the great moments, dramatically. But I also think the heart of this music is often in the softer music. And this is one of the reasons why I was very much drawn to this piece. It's often sung by big symphonic choirs who are wonderful at singing loud music. What I'm trying to do here is create what I laughingly called the world's largest chamber choir to work in great detail so that we can sing as a big choir, but very much with the detail and precision and tuning of a very, very good chamber choir. This is, I think, the heart of our collaboration with the choir here. It's, if you like, crudely speaking, using some of these great big, slightly Eastern colored voices, but also uniting a bit of choral discipline that we get in the English school, although sometimes that can be a little bit cold. And I'm trying to very much mix the two ingredients. And I think the Bellows is, is a wonderful piece. It strikes me, I'd say two more things really, how much this piece is of its time. There's so much revolutionary music here, fanfares, brass music, drums, percussion. I mean, we have, as you probably know, 16 timpani players. Um, the Dies Irae is very much a march. Um, it reminds me a lot of the, in its angularity of the Britain War Requiem. I'm sure this was a piece like the Verdi Requiem, which, which certainly influenced Britain. Um, but also at the heart of this music is this incredible sensuousness, this extraordinary vision for colour. And I think one other thing is this very French approach to Catholicism, which is all about the beauty of heaven, the joy, the rapture of the soul arriving in heaven. There is so much sensitivity in this music, and that's what I've been really trying to work on. Part of that is singing in French Latin. I don't think there is another recording of this piece in French Latin. Of course, Berlioz's singers would have sung in French Latin. It's a completely different vocal sound, uh, much more sensuous, much more sensual in color. And this is the one thing that I'm working on more than everything, to explore the sonorities of the instruments, to push the boundaries of color. So it's not just a dramatic tour de force, but also a piece of great delicacy and, I hope, great uh, emotion at the heart of the softer music. I think more than anything, I'm just really thrilled that we've managed to get this project actually to happen. Ever since I came here two or three years ago, we, we talked in some detail about trying to enable me to make records here and to make Wroclaw more the centre of my recording work. And as part of a strategy to develop this new young choir we had, the Bratislav Philharmonic Choir, and also to work with Bratislav musicians alongside my own Gabrielli concert and players who are more well, well known internationally. Um, but nevertheless, as you can imagine, in this day and age to produce a recording which actually requires 450 musicians is a tremendous logistic and practical and more than anything financial undertaking. So. I'm really thrilled that we have this fantastic energy here between the British musicians, the young musicians and the Polish musicians who are the core of the orchestra. Um, it's a great relationship and I'm so happy um, and excited that hopefully this will be the first of many projects that we work together and to pay tribute both to my director, my general director of the festival, Andrei Kozendiak, who has allowed me to have this fantastic, crazy idea. and. Also, to the mayor of the city, um, Rafael Dukiewicz, who's a wonderful lover of music and a great supporter of the festival and me personally. So I hope this recording has all the success we deserve because they deserve it more than anybody.